Well, hello, I'm Emeril Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril, a trendy dish that's been on a lot of menus these days is crusted fish, or generally crusted foods. But uh, I've been doing some various types of crusting for a long time, and particularly at Emeril's and at NOLA right now, there are a lot of things that you can crust. Crusted chicken, crusted beef, and it goes all the way back to, I guess, the original chicken fried steak, perhaps, when you had a little bread crust. Well, let me show you some of the things that I'm crusting with these days, and then we're going to uh, show you how to potato crust a fish. Now, pine nuts or pinon, pinon nuts. There is some uh, wonderful dishes that you can do, pine nut crusted fish, and Basically, when you grind or chop whatever you're going to crust with, in this case the pine nuts, you'd mix it with a little bit of fine breadcrumb or cracker crumb, and you can use crackers, so it adheres to the chicken or fish or beef that you're crusting. The other thing, speaking about adhering, is mustard. There are lots of types of mustards and mustards that you can make, and uh, it's a good, easy way to just put a little brushing of mustard on uh, your fish or chicken and uh, the seed or crumb or in this case pumpkin seeds another great uh, median I like to use and you can roast these a little bit get a good nutty flavor pistachios pistachios and cashews and of course pecans grown everywhere in Louisiana those beautiful pecan trees a little pecan crusted fish is usually a favorite now lately I've been doing a lot of things with vegetables this is some beautiful sweet corn and uh, also some squashes that you can hand grate and uh, use those as crust. And then everybody's favorite is the regular breadcrumb, but uh, some great options of that and a memory from my childhood is how Ritz crackers or crackers were used and ground and uh, moistened with a little bit of butter or olive oil and it's a great way uh, also to crust. Now, while we're on crusting, I, uh, I had to show you this, and this is some andouille sausage. And believe it or not, these days we're doing a lot with andouille sausage, of grinding it or hand chopping it very fine. Later on in the show, I'm going to show you exactly something from my New England background, but with my Creole twists that uh, later on we're going to do a little scallop dish for you. Now, an egg wash is another adherent that you can use. And another thing that I like, particularly with delicate fish and salmon it goes well with, is using a variety of fresh herbs, a variety of fresh herbs that you can just chop or leave in uh, various cuts, and you can chop those fresh herbs, and you can also use that uh, with different mustards as a crust. Well, let me show you one of my favorites these days, and it must be uh, memories of hash browns in the morning, but... Um, Maybe 10 years ago, I started, started using potatoes. And uh, whether they're sweet or uh, red or uh, yellow potatoes, uh, they really, really, you just peel the potato, um, as I did here. And with the grate box, the large grate box, I'm just going to grate some potato. We'll just make some great hash browns, huh? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and take this. We're using snapper today from the Gulf, uh, a red snapper. It was beautiful, too, at the market this morning. And um, you want to check and make sure you don't have any bones. Now, the point being with this fish that I'm using, sole works great and flounder. You see, it's not a very thick fish for this potato crust. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of some seasoning, spice, rub, whatever you want to call it. Hey, and you've got to season both sides so that it tastes good on both sides, not just one side. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that mustard, a little bit of that mustard. It's just a prepared mustard or a good Dijon mustard or, hey, have you seen the great Poupon? Well, we're going to uh, put a little mustard here and, and then watch how simple, watch how simple this is. Now we take our shredded potato and we just put the 
shredded potato right on our fish. Hmm, boy. Woohoo! Can't wait to eat this. All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to just transfer this into our pan. But first, even though I'm using a non-stick skillet, I still want to use just a little bit of olive oil, a little olive oil in the pan. And then what we're going to do is I have a little bit of salt. I'd like to uh, put a little salt on the uh, fish, on the potato crust. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this right into our skillet. Now watch this technique. Can you see this at home? You want to flip it right over in the skillet, okay? Hot skillet, flip it right over, and then you just, just put it really good on the, uh, on the burner. Now, let's talk about this for a second because we've got this delicious red snapper crusted potato fish, and um, what would go with that? What would go with that? Well, uh, it's very light, as you know. It's basically potato and fish, and what comes to mind with potato is some onion or leeks. So some nice caramelized onions would be delicious with this. Perhaps maybe with uh, in a marmalade style or in a relish style. And any type of relish that's light, vegetables, that sweet corn that I showed you earlier, maybe we could toss that with some, with some nuts and some, maybe some peppers and onions and olive oil and some herbs. Now, you want to cook this for about, it doesn't take long, maybe, maybe three minutes or so. And then you get a little spatula and flip it right over. You see that? Doesn't that look beautiful? Doesn't that look beautiful? And that thickness of the fish that I was talking about earlier, uh, it makes it really quite simple. And uh, if your fish is a little bit thick, a good uh, tip for you is that you can, at this stage, just pop it into the oven for a few minutes. And uh, then what you can do is just cook it in the oven so that you don't uh, overcook the potatoes. And then, when you're ready, a couple of three minutes on that side, you just simply take, take your fish. And um, I happen to, uh, like at the restaurants, have an easy little sauce that made with cayenne and different peppers that you can do. And uh, just your favorite kind of garnish and your favorite type of vegetables. A great vegetable would, uh, look at that, we'll use a little pepper. And uh, there we have a potato crusted fish. And let me tell you, we come back after the break, gonna show you another potato crusted fish. Don't go away, stay with me on the essence of Emerald. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. And uh, crusting foods, that's what we're doing today, but a little different than just breading. You know, breading is a submersion of flour into an egg wash and then either a flour and breadcrumb. And that's what we uh, all think about breading and how we've grown up with things that are breaded. But these are sort of creative crusts, if you will, not totally submerged, just one side, maybe three sides. And uh, another side is with sweet potatoes. You know. In Louisiana, we have a lot of sweet potatoes and use sweet potatoes uh, for a lot of dishes beside just at Thanksgiving. So I thought what I would do is take a sweet potato or a yam and grate that. Just like we did earlier in the show, we're going to take some sweet potato. It has its great starch and sweetness to it like a white potato or a yellow potato as well. And I'm also going to use a, a different kind of fish for this dish. There we go, we grate it up on that large. Hey, nothing wrong with a little sweet potato uh, hash browns. We'll talk about those hash browns earlier. Look at that, nice and grated. And I'm using one of my favorite fish from my New England bringing, and that is some sole or flounder you could use. This is just some lemon sole. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, some seasoning of uh, some spice, and we're gonna season that sole, give it some flavor. And then instead of the uh, yellow prepared mustard as earlier as we did, the first dish, I'm gonna use Creole mustard, a whole grain spiced mus uh, mustard. Now, uh, a mustard that's very close to, um, to Creole mustard would be a pulmary type mustard, 
and then you could just uh, jazz it up, as we say, and uh, maybe you want to add a little bit of cayenne to that and just a tad bit more vinegar to give it that, uh, that oomph as we want to have. Now, look at the sweet potato. We just do the same as the white potato earlier, and the mustard makes the, uh, the uh, fish adhere uh, to the sweet potato. Hot skillet, and uh, going to add a little bit of olive oil to our hot skillet. It's got to be hot because we want to get that crust, that crust. That's another, uh, another difference, if you will, between breading and actually crusting. We're going to take our fish, put it on the bottom side first. We're going to cook that side first, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of different ways that you can do it. Then you can come back with that excess sweet potato and add and cover up the spots, press it down. And we're going to cook that sole. You know, it doesn't take long to cook sole. It's a very thin, very delicate fish. So uh, about three or so, three or four minutes maximum uh, on high heat for that sweet potato. Hey, while this is cooking right now, come on with me and let me show you uh, a little gadget that I have to uh, do some other crusts. And that is, um, you know, we talked about having a grinder and uh, having a grinder to, not only for coffee in the morning but, uh, or in the evening, but uh, a grinder to do spice blends. And, well, you could do a lot of crust blends by having a little grinder like that. Uh, you could take some, quickly, like some pistachios is what we have right here. And your grinder, you can just grind them right up to the, see that, how, how quick that was? Now, you use that uh, as a crust, or you could mix it with a little bit of fine, uh, fine bread crumb or cracker crumb, and boy, that makes a great, great crusting and great flavor. Okay, here we go. We're going to take our fish now, okay, and we're going to just flip it right over. Now, we may want to add a little bit more of olive oil, as that potato is going to... You see here, just a piece of that, how that's really got golden and crispy and nice. And over here is a little darker. Well, look, if that happens, just take your spatula. And you can just take it right out of the pan and just discard it. And we'll finish our sole, a saute of sole with uh, sweet potato crust. Mm -mm. Yes, indeed. Now, we're going to get our plate ready here. I've uh, got one of my favorite. Uh, you could either do a spicy tartar sauce, or this happens to be just a little bit of uh, cilantro cream. And earlier, um, I had showed you about this cayenne pepper sauce that I have. You see that? And we'll just kind of put some of that, maybe a little bit more in the center. And then, I'm going to use a little bit of spice this time. The creative garnishing coming at you right here on the essence of emerald. And I'm going to use a little brunoise is what we call it of red pepper and also yellow pepper. I love that. I love using those simple garnishes. And you can cut them different ways and squares and chiffonades. Okay, look, about three or four minutes, we're going to flip that over. And look at our great crust. And we put that down right there, okay? We put that down. And then what I think that... Uh, I want to do, and you should do at home. You see that? Beautiful. I'm going to add a little bit of salt because the potato hasn't been seasoned. And also a little bit of just cracked pepper because there's something about salt and pepper and potatoes that's delicious. And speaking about delicious, when I come back, I'm going to show you another crusting recipe. So stay with me. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back, and I hope you're enjoying the crusting show today on The Essence of Emerald. Open your mind a little bit, because like, uh, well, growing up with scallops in New England, uh, you know, very close to Fall River is New Bedford, which is considered the scallop capital of the country. And uh, my good friend up there in Maine, Mr. Rod Mitchell, getting them beautiful live scallops to me in Louisiana. Thank you very much. Now. When you're looking for scallops, you want to make sure that they smell sweet. 
because that's how they should taste. And then you want to look for the little abductor here where the scallop sits in the shell. And uh, you want to take the little abductor and trim that off. And then you have your scallops just ready to, uh, to be crusted. But we need a crust. And I told you earlier about andouille sausage or my friends in Fall River and New Bedford. Maybe you could use some charisse or linguisa. Watch. I'm going to take some ground or chopped, very fine, andouille sausage. And then I'm going to take some breadcrumbs. Uh, you don't really need to add that much breadcrumb. A little less than that would be great. And I like to add a little cheese. That's right. You don't have to add cheese. I like a little cheese and a little bit of herb. I'm using some uh, dill and some uh, thyme and a little bit of oregano and parsley. Parsley. I love parsley. Yes. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to bring that here. And we're going to give it a little seasoning, a little spice. We could use some cayenne or salt or your favorite type of spice. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to add some olive oil to just moisten this crust up a little bit. You could use butter as well. Now, we don't want to get them too, we don't want to get it too, too uh, wet. Okay, we want to mix this in because we want the flavor of uh, the sausage the andouille, which also has just a little bit of uh, natural fat in there from the pork. Okay, you see that? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our delicious scallops and give them a little sprinkle of love and spice. And then you take your, your scallops and your crust and you crust them just like that. Isn't that great? Now, there are other ways that you can do it taking the scallop and you could do it this way as well and that way you can sort of coat a little bit of the scallop first you see that we'll do that again you just sort of toss the scallop in the bowl like that and it, you have this little little bits of fine crust and then we want to use our crust and then I think that we need a great sauce to go with these andouille crusted scallops so what I'm gonna do is in a sauce pot I've got a little bit of a little cream. Hey, if you don't want to use cream, don't use it. Use some sort of stock. But what this is going to be here is a very simple, delicious, very simple, delicious Creole mustard sauce. And I'm going to add a little honey to it. I've got some fresh chive because I like that oniony flavor. They're a little bit delicate. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of honey, a little bit of honey. And also what I find is the honey is actually going to also be a part of the thickening that's going to actually thicken that, uh, that sauce and also sweeten it. Then I'm going to add that spicy Creole mustard into that. Real simple. I've got my oven on 375 degrees. My oven is on 375 degrees. You see that? You whisk in, whisk that in there. And then, whoo, ooh, that is delicious. And you see, you see how long that took? Not long at all. I'm going to turn the heat down very, very, very low. You want to be sure to do that at home as well because you don't want that cream to boil over. 375 degrees. And uh, we're going to put the scallops in the oven. And those scallops are actually going to take about about no more than 15 to 20, 15 to 20 minutes depending on the size. Now if your scallops are smaller, okay, if your scallops are smaller, then uh, it's going to take less time. But here it is, when it comes out in about 15 minutes, hey, we're not talking about building any kind of rocket ships here. We're just cooking. We're having fun. We're having a great time. And we're using something that I love and grew up with, some scallops. Now, let me show you what we're going to do. You can serve them. You see the, um, the, the sort of the liquid, the broth mm, inside of that? That actually came from all the pieces. Oh, you should taste that. All the pieces of the andouille or charisse or your favorite smoked sausage. Remember I talked about that natural fat when it was made? That rendered out and it also crusted our scallops. Now, 
what I'm going to serve, and what I like is I'm going to put a little, a little bed here of Creole mustard sauce. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our scallops just like this. Doesn't that look great? And you could put your favorite relish right inside of that. And then serve as many as you like. Then I'm going to add little bits of spice just for a little prettiness and some onion and also a little pepper. And you Join me tomorrow because we're going to have some fun cooking again on the essence of Emerald. Bye now.